Okay, everybody, here is your next flip lesson on samples and populations. So let's get right down to it. Uh, population. So go ahead and write this down. You can pause the video whenever you please. But what a population is, is basically the entire group of people or objects that you want information about. So if you want uh, information about what girls think, then you're going to probably want to ask you know, girls and, and get a good idea of what the girls think. If you want to know what football players think, then you're going to probably want to ask about football players. And, you're gonna, and your population will be football players. You're not going to ask um, those that play tennis about football-related questions. If your information relies on those being knowledgeable and knowing about it, um, then you're going to ask that um, distinct population. So population is the entire group or people of people or objects that you want information about. Next thing is called a sample. So what you want to look at here is that populations are very large. So you can't possibly sometimes ask every single person. So, you know, for instance, if you want to know who watches a certain TV show, there's no way we can we can go and ask every person in America who owns a TV if they watch a certain show. So they only sample, um, I think, a group of about 1,000, 1,200 people or something, something like that. I could be wrong. But it's a smaller subset. And that way, um, they get a pretty good idea of who's watching what. And um, they don't have to go through the really hard task of asking millions upon millions of people what they watched last night. That would be extremely difficult and impossible, really, if you really think about it. So um, you, know, you, you, you want to take a smaller part of the population. You know, if you want to know what sixth graders think, yeah, you can ask all, what, 200 sixth graders what they think. But that might be difficult to take a lot of time. Maybe you can just do a random sampling of people in the hallway. And that's kind of what I'm getting to next, which is a random sample. Each person in the population has an equally likely chance of being selected. So uh, I use the arrows. Like, hopefully, you're not throwing arrows at people. I wouldn't do that. But that's kind of like what I'm talking about. You know, you, you want to be random about it. You, you, you don't want to be very selective about who you're asking this question to. You want to make it random so that you get a good idea of um, what people think. So everyone has an equally, um, they have an equal chance of being selected for something. So you, you might get a random phone call asking you about um, a current event. You know, there is, it was not like you were put on a list like, oh, please call me. Um, someone just called you out of the blue and said, hey, what do you think about the war in Syria? Um, what do you think about um, widening Butterfield Road? You know, you're not going to get, um, you know, you're not going to be on this master list of people that have to call you, you know, uh, regarding certain things, okay? So that's what a random sampling is. You, you just want to take a small part of the population, and then after you do that, Ask them what they think and, and kind of be random about it. Um, a bias sample is basically information that doesn't represent the population. So bias means, you know, to kind of be in favor of something. Um, you know, we have, we have, all, we all have our biases. You know, I have my biases towards music. I, you know, only like certain kinds of music and I tend to um, ignore other kinds when, you know, when you really think about it, maybe that music is pretty good, but I tend to stay with music that I like and enjoy listening to. So that would be biased. Even though there's plenty of great music out there, I'm not listening to it. Um, you know, but here's an example of uh, perhaps a, you know, or here's a situation where you might want to look at uh, whether or not you're being biased or unbiased. You know, so for example, let's pretend you're conducting a survey about whether or not skateboarding should be allowed in public areas. Uh, 
who should you ask, you know, when you're, when you're conducting this survey, who should you ask? Okay? So here are your, um, here's your choices here. So A, B, C, or D. So A is the senior citizens at the community center. You think that's a good idea? Hmm. I have a feeling, and no offense to senior citizens, I have a feeling they probably would be not in favor of you skateboarding in their areas, their public spaces. So probably not the best group to ask. You know, they, you know, they have their opinions, and uh, many of them are very intelligent. Most of them are very intelligent and have great opinions, but for this particular question, I would not say that that's a good group to ask. So we can say, okay, the senior citizens, yeah, I would stay out of the senior center. How about parents only? Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, maybe uh, parents are in favor. You know, I, I, I am a parent, and I'm not um, against kids skating in public areas. I, I was a skateboarder once when I was a kid, so I'm not against that. But uh, parents only, you know, that only represents the grown-ups. Maybe, you know, kids have want to say in it as well. And then uh, conversely, should we ask skateboarders? And, uh, you know, skateboarders, yeah, that's, that's a valuable, you know, group in, in this sample because you're asking about skateboarding and you want those that know a lot about skateboarding. <coughs> but you're probably only going to get one kind of answer from skateboarders, and that's going to be yes, it should be allowed. Um, and it's in their interest to say yes. They want to be able to skateboard wherever they want. Um, but not, I wouldn't say that's a, a, a good group to ask because you're only going to get one kind of response. You know, if you were to turn, for instance, uh, a petition into your, um, into the mayor and the mayor asked you, hey, where did you get all these signatures from? And he said, oh, well, I got them from the skate park. And he's going to go, okay, we'll go back out and do the survey again because that's not very, um, it, it's not unbiased. You, know, you need to do a more of a random sampling. You need to go to a mall. Um, you know, maybe go to a, a traffic light or something or a stop sign and um, ask people, you know, to roll down their windows and ask them a quick question, yes or no. You know, something that won't take a lot of time. But, you know, just asking skateboarders is probably not the best idea. So, yeah, I mean, D, yeah, it's a very general, generic uh, group. But it's broad enough that I think we can get an unbiased sample, you know, residents of the community who pay taxes. Um, or, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be who pay taxes, but, you know, just random residents. You know, go to, like I said, go to the mall. Um, maybe you're asking people, um, you know, that are walking down the street. You know, just, you're going to say, okay, I'm going to ask every fourth person what they think about this. I'm going to, I'm going to ask, um, a guy first, and then I'm going to ask a girl next. I'm going to ask a guy first, and then a girl next. So that way you get kind of a male-female opinion as well. Because maybe, you know, males feel differently about skateboarding than females. And, I'm, you know, not to be sexist or anything like that, that's, that is a possibility. So you'd, you'd want to ask those individuals. Okay, so that does it for this flip lesson. And... You can go ahead and, you know, rewind this video if you need to. I'm sorry about the audio. I really am kind of working on getting better um, audio recording equipment here. But uh, just bear with me. Turn it up a little bit if you can't hear me. And um, I'll do my best to make it better next time.